Hello, uh, welcome back. My name is Andrei and I'm here today to talk about how we would scale a uh, TensorFlow model on Kubernetes infrastructure. Uh, all this work is done based on our open source uh, product called Skipper. And if you follow me, um, uh, you can see that in the past I already recorded a series of uh, videos about um, Kubernetes, TensorFlow, Docker, um, RabbitMQ uh, based on uh, Skipper infrastructure, which is uh, ML workflow, which is supposed to uh, simplify um, ML ops. So let's um, uh, jump into the architecture and let's see how it works. So today I'll be focusing on uh, serving microservice and I'll be talking how you could scale this microservice on Kubernetes. This microservice runs a TensorFlow model and we'll see how we can scale up and down uh, the service to uh, serve uh, users better. Okay, and I'm actually running um, a fresh uh, Skipper infrastructure on um, this machine. So let's, um, uh, let's go and um, check uh, what pods are up and running. So we can see that uh, there are two pods for the serving service and each pod runs uh, for the service, uh, serving service runs two containers. One is the main, uh, which is um, uh, responsible to execute prediction and the second one is a sidecar helper container, which is responsible uh, for the model storage. Uh, I was talking more about this in my previous video. And there's a single pod for training service. And the main idea is that we should run uh, serving and training logic in separate pods because usually you would probably run a single pod for the model training because you train a single instance, single model. But you may have many users who would want to access this model and execute prediction. So for prediction, you would uh, typically run uh, multiple instances. So that's why we have separate, several, several uh, pods for, for the serving model. Okay, and since, since this is the uh, this is a fresh infrastructure, first of all we need to train uh, the model, and yeah, the training request comes through the Celery API and uh, which runs asynchronously, so we can uh, enable the logs for the Celery, and in this way we could uh, easily see when model training is done. Okay, let's go over here. This is the command to enable. Uh, logs for the salary and salary is a great uh, tool which allows to implement asynchronous request on a request on top of fast API uh, request would come and salary would delegate delegate it to the rabbit in queue and uh, subscriber would uh, execute and whenever it's finished it will be done and at the same time um, rest uh, endpoint will not be blocked because it executes asynchronously and later by task ID, you can check in salary if this task is completed or not. Okay, and we could open uh, the log so we can see that uh, salary was able to connect to the rabbit in queue. And then we would go to the uh, fast API. Let's refresh this. And we will execute training. So we have uh, payload 0 0.2 and there's no data for the training and we can say this is the uh, sample training. Okay, then we execute it, task is submitted and we can see this log printed in the salary window and in few seconds model should be created. Okay, task is completed, this means uh, training is done, good can exit from that lock and now uh, since um, we have a model we can uh, this model was distributed to the kubernetes storage which is accessible from uh, first and second uh, serving pods uh, automatically and this means we are ready to execute prediction and let's do one thing let's open uh, logs for the first and for the second port for the serving so we would see how uh, requests um, being executed and remember, because the core thing in uh, Skipper is RabbitMQ um, message broker, 
and uh, since we have now two pods and basically this means we have two subscribers to RabbitMQ which are listening uh, from RabbitMQ when prediction should be executed, when prediction request should be executed. And what we get out of the box from RabbitMQ is uh, round robin uh, load balancing. Uh, <clears throat> when a request comes uh, to RabbitMQ, it checks how many subscribers are uh, for, for this event and it sends them to the first subscriber or to the second in a round uh, robin fashion. And this means if we have uh, a heavy load, uh, then uh, RabbitMQ would distribute um, new, those uh, new events that are coming uh, evenly across uh, all the subscribers. And uh, this means for Kubernetes, we can scale up and down uh, pods and we uh, actually, uh, this um, uh, task event distribution will be happening automatically based on number of subscribers for RabbitMQ. Okay, so let's open the log and for that, let's again go to the readme. Now we, are, we need to go to the uh, serving service uh, readme. And over here, <clears throat> we'll see there's a command, uh, this one, which allows us to open a log <clears throat> for the pod. So let's go and open a log for the first pod. Let's uh, again get a list of pods. So this is the first one for the serving service. and. Let's go over here and replace uh, pod name with, with actual name. And this is uh, message shows that TensorFlow uh, is started on this uh, pod and it's up and running, waiting for the requests. And then we go and copy the same command for in a separate window for the second pod. And now we copy the name of the uh, second port over here. Like that. And we got uh, two logs uh, displayed. Now we can go and to the fast API and execute prediction request. We, we can execute predict function and we'll see where the message, um, TensorFlow message for the prediction logic will be printed in the first or second port. And then we will execute one more time the same request and we'll see that it will be printed, second one will be printed in uh, second or, or first port, uh, depending which one was executed first, right? So we can go here, we can rename task type to serving. Uh, there's no uh, payload variable and for the data, we accept default values and we'll execute prediction for this data that uh, is available on the payload. And we can say this is the uh, sample prediction and we press execute. We get back the response uh, from the predict function. And if you go back to the log, we see that uh, there was some TensorFlow log printed in the first port and there's nothing in the second one. And now if we can go back and execute again, we get back the response and now the same message is printed in the second port. This means uh, requests are distributed across pods uh, as expected in a round-robin fashion. So uh, now let's go and scale this um, infrastructure to three pods. Let's see how it runs. And again, we go to the readme file and this is a command which uh, helps to scale uh, number of pods to three. And we go here and execute the command to scale to three. It says it's scaled and now we can uh, check pods. So we can see that four seconds ago, new serving service pod was created as expected. And so we have two pods from before and uh, one more new one. And you see it was instantly created uh, just in, in the speed of the second. Uh, so this is how, how it works. Now we can uh, open logs for, uh, for this new pod. And let's see if when we execute again, uh, predict request, if, uh, if a request will be routed to this pod or not. Okay, let's open log in uh, this window and now we copy paste 
the name for this uh, new port which was created uh, four seconds ago. Okay, we paste it here by replacing the port name. Okay, we, we got default message from the TensorFlow and this means this port is up and running. And now let's go and uh, execute the same uh, predict request from fast API. We call execute. Uh, it's no message here because probably the first uh, port handled it. Then we execute second time. No message because probably the second handled. And let's do the third time. Let's see if it works. Yeah, now we see that message is printed for the preferred port and uh, it works in a round robin fashion. Okay, and now if we exit uh, the logs and we execute the same scaling uh, scale command, but now we say, rep, uh, we say number of replicas to one. This means we scale down. So this will kill uh, two ports and we see uh, two pods are terminating and one is running as expected. So this will release uh, resources from the machine and uh, uh, if we see that we don't have too many users, then we can uh, just run one pod. And in this case I was doing it manually, but Kubernetes allows uh, auto-scaling option. Based on load, it can create pods or re uh, remove pods. So this, uh, this very, um, is great actually. So it can, can be automatic. And uh, here I'm using uh, deployment, but uh, in, because in this case we have a, a same model is being shared between pods. So we want to use the same model between pods. We want to share the same storage. But if you're using uh, implementing stateful in, uh, logic, you may want uh, each pod to have its own storage. And uh, then you would uh, use stateful sets uh, if uh, you want to have each pod to be assigned to its own storage. and uh, uh, when scaling up and down will be more predictable with, uh, with stateless sets. But in this case, uh, it's a stateless application which basically shares uh, exactly the same model in all pods, so um, just deployment uh, replication is fine. Uh, let's see. Okay, those two pods were removed, so now we have just one pod, and let's see if our fast API is still running. We execute request and we get back the response. So this uh, single pod, single subscriber handles all the requests now and uh, returns the response. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching. And um, the idea for this video to show you how uh, you can scale um, ML uh, model running in the pod uh, with Kubernetes and how you can handle different loads based on that. And all of this is based on uh, our product Skipper, which uh, is already in first production release. Uh, uh, it's I created the first uh, release on, on GitHub for Skipper. So if you're looking for the stable version, you just go to the uh, GitHub and there on the rele se releases section, you would um, uh, find the first version and you're free to use it. So thanks um, for watching. Stay tuned and see you next time. Bye.